This is the baby episode. It's time for Becky's Homestead. Do you want to raise backyard chickens, grow a garden, enjoy home-cooked meals, and be a little more self-sufficient? I used to do the 9-to-5 grind in the suburbs, but in my heart, I knew that wasn't a real life for me. So one day, I sold it all, moved to the country, built my dream log cabin, and started homesteading. I've never looked back. So if you're tired of struggling and want to escape, I'll show you how I did it. This is Becky's Homestead. I go to my friend Kat's house to pick out my baby goats. I show you how to take care of baby chicks and ducklings. And I read a letter from Dorothy. Let's go. You want to see the new babies? There's some of them. <laughs> These are full-blooded registered Nubians. Hold still. You're not getting Mama's down Mama's right there. I know you love your mommy. So the reason I'm here today is to pick out my kinder goat babies. Yay. I know. I'm so, so happy. It's been a long time coming, but this is finally here. These little guys were born three and a half days ago. And there's four of them. And there's, there's two more four. down there. This is the only little girl. Isn't she beautiful? Oh, I she's love spots. Stunning. <laughs> I just think that one's like really nice. I uh, try and be with all my girls when they're born. You want healthy, good animals. Try and be there for the birth. And it's an investment. I mean, Absolutely. you want to be there because this is what it's all about in the spring is the babies being born and all. The two mamas are half sisters. But one has a beard and one does Come on over. <laughs> I read the, how they determine the quality of the milk is the butter fat. Nubians do have a, a little bit higher butter fat, but then the Nigerians are... Who <laughs> oh, says humans are the only ones that use tools? You don't need to help it, because it can get it. <laughs> oh, it's a heavy, sturdy little one. That's Mama, coming on two weeks old. And do you see how this one has short ears? They're white, but they're short. They don't flop down. They stand up. I know. What we call those ears are airplane ears. I like they airplane They don't go ears. down, and they don't go up. And I want Kat to explain to the viewers what to look for when choosing a baby goat. And especially if you're a greenie like me and you're not quite sure what to choose. You have to figure out why you want a goat. What is the purpose for your goat? And in your case, you want a couple of nice little milk goats. Yes. If you're choosing baby goats, check out the mama. Okay. See how the mama is. You should know your animals. You should know ins and outs, uh, right. their health records, their productions, you know, all that good stuff. Okay, so that's great advice. How well they are. What, what about just visually? You know, can you tell visually, like, what somebody should avoid or what looks good? Now, this one feels heavy like it's been eating good, so this that's is a, a plus. <laughs> nice, healthy, um, bouncing little babies. Anything out of the ordinary, you can look at any kind of deformities. Nice straight legs, good ears, mm -hmm. good clean eyes, pink eyes, pink in the lips. Now those little teeth. Now are they always teeps. this vocal? Now this is a this is making a lot of noise. Should well, they mom, be making a lot of noise? I would love an animal. In in my opinion, I would love a bouncing vocal animal. Besides, Mama's right around your feet. Yes, she is. I feel her with, on with me. brothers and sisters. Okay, so that sounds really good. So I doubt you're going to find that in an auction. I would recommend finding a breeder. I feel more comfortable with a breeder because I, I do you can answer questions I have and. If I bring them home and I'm not quite sure, I can call you Absolutely. and be a big wimp and say, Cat, yeah. help! <laughs> Where if you purchase your goat at an auction, there's nobody to call. And you don't know anything about the animal. Right. But I want to make sure that Cat explains to the viewers the two tests that dairy goats need to make sure they're healthy if you plan on using the milk for your family. Okay. I know there are two. Is that correct, Cat? Um, I do three. Oh, three. Okay, I'm three. wrong. Three of them. I do a TB test and a brucellosis test. Both of those diseases will carry over in the milk through humans. So that's the important part. It's important. That will carry through in, in the, the milk. milk. So your family will be consuming that. Absolutely. If you Absolutely. don't have that tested. Now, let's say it, it proves it, it comes positive. Can you treat that and cure that? Or is that goat no longer going to be useful for a dairy goat? Um, I don't know exactly if there's a cure for it, and I know there's no vaccine that I know of. Okay. 
and I wouldn't take the chance. And what about the third test that you did? All right, the third test is a CAE test. CAE. Uh, Caprine arthritis encephalitis. Okay. It's a very, very deadly disease, and it's very contagious through your herd. Is and there a cure for that? There no. is no cure so whatsoever. So for either, all three tests, there's no cure. So it's very important to get the test done. I do. I yeah. do. Even though I'm a beginner, one thing I've noticed, it's big in the industry, is they pull the baby off mm -hmm. the mother right away. They pull the baby. And so I guess they're, without spending the money on testing, that's their way of a safety net. Don't bother so. spending the money on testing. Just pull the baby right away. Well, when they start pulling babies, you got to feed them special colostrum and, oh, yeah. and go through all that. And, and, to and me, that's a big expense. If they want to do that, that's fine. I right. have nothing against those who do it. Exactly. But it's not for me. So do you have any experience from purchasing a goat that wasn't tested and then having a problem after you got the goat home? Yes, I did. I had a friend who was out buying Nubians. And she didn't tell me that she was coming over with Nubians that she had purchased. And I says, you know, I have a quarantine pin. I always have one or try to always have one. She brought the goats over and I says, okay, fine. Put them in the quarantine pen and we'll get them tested immediately. The vet came out the next day or two, had them tested. One came back positive and I said, all three are out of here. All three are out of here. You don't even want a chance. I don't do want to take the chance. They weren't in in a milking situation, so that was good. Right. But still, you know, it, it's a big clean down and a big disinfectant, and I don't want them near my animals. I know. So, I feel the same way. I know I have clean cheese. And we want to eat our cheese and we with a smile eat our on our face. We don't want to be worried about our cheese now. No, and I don't want anybody else to be worried and about And really it. the point of having a homestead and raising your own food is because in our minds, the quality is higher. Quality is, so we want yeah. to keep it that way. Absolutely. We want to keep the quality up there. That's the whole reason we homestead. Because we know what goes in the animal, right. and we know what goes out of the animal, right. and you know. It's, so it's our advice to stuff. the viewers is: be picky and go ahead and test and have high standards. Absolutely, especially with new people. So I say, if you got an idea, you might. <laughs> what are you doing to me? <laughs> he's just smelling you, and he's thinking you're a girl goat, and he just wants to love. Big fat you. Becky's hiding behind little skinny cat. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> <laughs> These are the two goats I've chosen today. These are going to be my starter goats. I'm so excited. They're going to stay here on Cat's Farm until they're weaned. And then I'll be bringing them home to the goat pen. Thanks, Cat, for having us. And thanks for all the help you give me being a greenie. Oh, I hope uh, it, it helped out a lot. And, of course, with every goat that goes, gets my phone number. Oh, nice. So, if you got any questions, I'll be day calling. or night. <laughs>Okay, now I'm going to read a letter. This one says, Hi Becky, my name is Dorothy. My daughter and I just came across your YouTube video and we just loved you. I just received three beautiful baby female longhorns that I ordered from Myers Hatchery. I've never had little chicks and am learning as I go. Right now I decided to do the box method because I'm in Plymouth, Massachusetts, and it's still a bit cold. I was wondering when you think it would be good to introduce these little fluff balls to the flock. I have no roosters, only hens, but am afraid they might try to kill the babies if I place them in now. Well, Dorothy, that's absolutely right. When you put the little newcomers in the coop, the big ones do peck them and pick on them. So at this point, I think the hens would kill the babies. What I do is I get a cage. Once the babies are big enough that they don't fit through the little cracks in the cage, I put the babies in the cage and put the cage in the coop. This kind of gets them used to being in the coop 
together, still letting the babies have protection. Dorothy isn't the only one with baby ducklings and chicks. You probably have some too. Let's go outside and I'll show you how to take care of them using the box method. Today, I have little baby ducks in the box. But whether you have chickens or ducks, I'm going to show you how to take care of them when you first bring them home. I'm using the box method because that's the way most people will bring their little babies home. One mistake we're all tempted to make is buying too many. They're so cute when you're picking them out. So try hard just to get a few. In my little box right here, I have three ducks. I'm going to show you how big they are. Now these ducks are miniature call ducks. They're very rambunctious, but they're only like, I think, two weeks old. They're not very old, and they're pretty big already. And they peep quite loud. They're calling for each other. Stand up there. So that's how big they are. They're pretty big, so they're kind of messy. That's why you don't want to get too many. Okay, what you do, it's still chilly at night, so you're going to need a heating lamp. I go and buy this light bulb at Walmart. It's like $2. It's very cheap. It has the silver on the back, so it reflects all the light forward. This clip right here I have, I buy at Lowe's. It's part of a work lamp that you can buy, so when you're doing woodworking, you can clip it on there. So you just clip it on the box, and then you aim the light bulb down into the box. But you don't, you know, make sure it's not touching anything. It can touch this metal right here. That part doesn't matter. But you don't want it to touch the cardboard. So what you do is you, let me turn the box so you can see clearly. You put the light on half the box only. This part is the cool area of the box. This part is the warm area of the box. The ducks or the chickens will choose which temperature they need. And they will move back and forth. What you want to put in your box, which is the best thing I found, is wood chips. You can buy a bag of wood chips for like $4 at a feed store or tractor supply. So that's what you do. You get your box, you put wood chips in there, you got your baby chickens and your baby ducks, hopefully just three or four, don't get too many, and you have your light clip and your bulb. Okay, so that's really all you need. It is not very much stuff to get started and you'll have some nice laying hens. My dog is eating the chicken food. Tango, get. The babies are quite strong and they can jump high and they can jump out of the box. If they do jump out of the box, you're gonna have to just get a bigger, taller box for the time being. You might be wondering what to feed your little ducks and chickens once you get them home. What I use is called a laying mash. This is not medicated. I don't feed the chick start, which is medicated, because I don't believe in medicating if they don't need it. So this is what I feed, and it's the little ducks and chickens eat it just fine. It's little, like cornmeal. So they love this, and they can eat this for quite a long, their whole life, actually, not quite a long time. They can eat this their whole life. It has everything they need. And the next thing I have here is a little bowl of water. They are very messy with the water, so I do not give them a big bowl of water. I would rather give them a small bowl and fill it three or four times a day. So make sure you feed and water your chickens and ducklings every day, and I would say at least a heaping tablespoon per chicken or duck per day. That's about the amount you can start with, and you can make a little adjustments if need be. And they're very, very messy, so don't forget your thick layer of wood chips on the bottom. Or you can do it the natural way, like I do. This is the way I prefer. Put them with mommy and daddy. Mother knows best. And of course, the ducks are very happy. And daddy's going to attack Scott. There they are. One big happy family in the triangle chicken coop. Thanks for watching. Email me your questions or suggestions. Happy homesteading. Bye-bye.